can you hear me? Okay, so let us start today's lesson. If you remember, there was one problem left from the previous session. So let me solve that problem for you and then we continue immediately to this new lesson. Uh, we were supposed uh, to determine uh, n from this equation. So this is not an identity that we want to show. We are supposed to use this equality to find this n. Of course, we also need to use the formula for this uh, number that we learned about in the previous session. So let me remind you about that. Uh, so the formula was... Uh, this. If you remember, if I have P and I have N and R in general, if of course uh, N is a natural number is smaller than or equal to N, then the formula was N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. Okay, so this number which is coming first goes to the numerator factorial and then then it's the difference between them goes to the denominator. Okay, so using this formula, I want to solve this equation. So what I have to do, I have to replace this with the appropriate relation and this one the same, and then try to solve that. So I would write two instead of p, n, and two, I would use this formula instead of n, I have to put n, but instead of r, I put two, yes? So it becomes uh, multiplied by n factorial in the numerator and then I have n minus 2 factorials in the denominator and then after that I have 50 equals 2 on the right hand side I will do the same but this time 2n is going to play the role of this n and 2 is playing the role of r so this means that in the numerator I have to write 2n totally factorial and then divided by the difference between these two numbers so this factorial. Okay, so I have to simplify this as much as possible. Okay, the first thing that comes probably to mind is the famous property of the factorial. So what do I mean? I mean that in the numerator, instead of n factorial, you can write n times n minus 1 and then times n minus 2 factorials. And then in the denominator, you have n minus 2 factorial so that was a good uh, decomposition because this one and this one will go away. And I am not left with factorial sign anymore. So on the right hand side I can do the same thing but I write 2n as my first number and then 2n minus 1 and then finally 2n minus 1 uh, 2n minus 2 factorial and then divided by the denominator. Yes? And now you see that this one and that one are gone. This one and that one are gone. So it's a simple equation. So I have 2n, n minus 1, and I have plus 50. On the right hand side, I have 2n, 2n minus 1, which is just a simple normal equation. And I have to solve this. So for example, I multiply 2n inside, it becomes 2n squared minus 2n plus 50. On the right hand side I will get 4n squared minus 2n. Uh, so if I move one of these two n's to the other side it becomes positive, the other one is negative so they will cancel out. And then what is left for me, I write 50 on the left and I move 2n squared to the right, 4n squared minus 2n squared becomes 2n squared. When I divide both sides by 2 it becomes 25 and then I take the square root, it becomes plus or minus 5, but because n is being used here, this symbol only makes sense if this n is a natural number, otherwise this symbol is not defined in the first place. So this is a fake root or a false root, okay? So I would say that n equals to minus 5 is not acceptable. So therefore, the only answer to this problem is n equals to 5. Any questions? 
Okay, now let us go to the new lesson. So the new lesson is combination. Okay, probably you also realize from the word combination, it means that this is the first time that order doesn't matter for us. Okay, so what is important for us is the combination of the elements that I have in my group. So if I want to give a rough definition of R combination, I would say that consider n objects and let R be a natural number somewhere between 1 in, and n inclusive, of course. Any selection consisting of R of the n objects such that the order of the selected objects in the selection does not matter is called an R combination of the objects. Okay? So the number of R combinations uh, of N distinct objects is denoted with one of these symbols. So permutation starts with P, so that was natural. Here we use capital C, for example, which is uh, the first letter of combination. But these in the calculators, usually they use this. And then this is a more uh, uh, popular symbol for that. I myself always use this. I don't know, but most of the books, they use this symbol. So if you remember, for permutation, we had these symbols, this one. And then I told you this one. And then there was this one, yes? Yeah, for permutations, I don't know, for some reason, this is more popular. But for combination, this is more popular. And there is a name for this. You read it, N choose R. Okay, so this is called N choose R, as I have written here. Okay, so now let us start with our examples. And of course, as you probably can guess, the point of this lesson would be to find a formula for this. And the formula is very simple, and I think you can also guess what's going on. So let me not show the formula for you, so might be you can guess it yourself. Okay, so consider the letters A, B, C, D, and E. Part 1, write down all three combinations of these uh, three letters. So it means by reading this, it means that I want to choose each time three of these and that's it. Then there is no arrangement. They are not arranged. So you don't have any arrangement going on. You just choose. Okay, so what is important for you is the combination. So number one, uh, so if I want to write all combination so I might be interested to choose a B and C this is one possible combination but I do not start permuting them or if you want to you can write CBA but don't think this is a new thing you see if I write CBA this item from combination point of view is combined from three letters a B and C this is also the same so from combination point of view, I will consider both of them the same. So it doesn't matter if you want you write this down or if you want you write it down, this one, but not both of them, just one of them, okay? Okay, so this is one possible combination. I don't know, is there any other combination, of course? So, for example, I can keep A and B the same, then I can choose D but do not permute them anymore, just one of them. And then, for example, I can write A and B and then write E at the end. So this is one possibility. Uh, okay, is there something that I can start with A and B? So you see no. So let me start with A and C. Okay, if I start with A and C, one possibility is this. If I start with A and C, one possibility is this. Of course, I am talking about starting with A and C because I want to organize myself. Otherwise, there is no order uh, involved in this problem. I'm just trying to keep uh, track of all possibilities. So, and then, um, okay, so then let me start with A and D. Then I will have E. So, so far, I have considering A to be present in my combinations, okay? But, of course, I can just start with combinations that there, there are no A's involved. So, 
B, C, and D. One other possibility is B, C, and E. Okay, one possibility is C, D, and E. Uh, there should be one more. Can you see? I know, <laughs> I know the formula, so I am completely sure that there should be one more. But can you help me to find that one? B D E S, yes, that is B D E. Okay, so B D E. I haven't considered B D E before. So yeah, of course you need to convince yourself this is the only. These are the only ones, and then. Uh, in part two, what I'm asking you is to use part one to determine the value of this. If I ask you what is the meaning of this symbol, it means that if you have five distinct objects, which I have in this case, A, B, C, D, and E, and I want to choose three of them in which order is not matter, in how many ways I can do it, if I have done everything correctly here, it means that these are the only possibilities, then I start counting them and I realize this is 10. So using part 1, I can say that this choose uh, 5 choose 3 is equal to 10. Of course, the formula that will come later will confirm that. Okay, uh, but I think you can immediately understand uh, the formula yourself. Do you have any idea what the formula for C, N and R? So I think it is a very nice, uh, if, if you want to find the formula, it is better to find a connection between this and this. Can you see a connection between this one? By the way, which one is bigger, P and R or C and R? Yeah, P and R is bigger because P and R you also you choose of course but you also start arranging them and you consider about different arrangements so definitely this one is bigger than this one uh, but is there any better and nicer relation between P and an R and C and an R uh, I cannot hear you Alex hello you might be able to speak a little bit louder Yes, yes. Uh, C should be x times larger than uh, P, where x is the, um, the um, possible combinations of locations. Okay, so can you tell me what is that x, what is your x here in this particular case? Anyone else? So he's right, he's saying that there is a, uh, so if... Yeah, but it's not hard to see. So, so let me let me write it in this way. So, assume that you you are interested in P and an R. What you do, you have, of course you choose these items. But for this item, how many possibilities I can write below it? For example, A C B. The other possibility is B A C. The other possibility is C. Uh, so let me write with B, C, A, and then C, A, B, and then C, B, A. So for this one, I can write these many. If it is permutation, I need to consider all of them. But now when it is combination, from all of them, I consider only one of them. It doesn't matter which one you write because the combination of all these items are the same. They are consisting of the same items A, B, and C. And the same is true for the next one. For the next one, how many items you would you, you uh, how many items are there if you are interested in permutation? Again, six. Yes, A, D, B, and then you can continue. For this one, there are six permutations. For this one, there are six permutations. Now, if I start writing all the permutations, what you see in this table, what you see in this table would be. Oops, sorry. Uh, if I start writing all those permutations, so uh, this is gone now, sorry. But if I start writing all these permutations below each one of these items, and if I ask you how many items you see in total, this becomes P, 5, and 3. But now, 
you should divide it by some number to be able to get the combinations. So what is that number you are dividing? Can you tell me? Six. Six. In general, what is where six is coming from in general? Three factorial. Three factorial, exactly. So it means that if you want to write the combination, one way to look at the combination is to uh, to calculate the permutation and then divide it by three factorial. So this is what you just need to learn. And that is exactly the same for the most general case. Yes? And I think you can immediately come up with this idea that this formula, so as you see, I'm writing it as this very popular notation. You can write it this. I think the book is using this symbol. Okay, and then you see there is a division by R factorial here. So hopefully you are convinced now that So, uh, of course, I have talked about these things orally, but then you are convinced, hopefully, that C, N, and R is P, N, and R, but you have to divide it by R factorial, because when I choose R items from N items in P, I am also considering the arrangements. If I choose R objects, the number of arrangements after the items are chosen is R factorial. But I am not interested in the arrangements here. From all those R factorials item, only one of them count when it comes to combination. So it means that I have to divide this. And then you have this formula before, yes? So you have 1 over R factorial multiplied by P, N, and R, we just remind you today here, it's N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So if I multiply them, it becomes N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. And that is exactly the formula uh, in, the, in the problem. Okay. Uh, so this is the formula. This is given in the formula sheet, but it's not hard to remember. There is an extra R factorial in the denominator. Any questions so far? Okay, let us now give you some remarks. Uh, there is a, a convention that N choose 0 is also defined, even though it doesn't make sense, yes? because this symbol makes sense if I want to choose R item out of N items, yes? So it doesn't make sense, okay, I have N objects, I want to choose zero of them. Uh, you might say that, okay, this is only one possibility, I don't choose any, but it needs to be defined separately. So people have defined this to be one. If this is defined to be one, and now, if I calculate n of 0 using this formula, let, what, let us see what happens. It becomes n factorial divided by 0 factorial, n minus 0 factorial. But 0 factorial is 1 by convention, n minus 0 is just n, n factorial, n factorial is gone is 1. So you see that uh, if I calculate n and 0 using this formula, I will also get the same, con uh, the same number which is defined by convention, okay? So it means that you can extend this instead of saying that this formula is valid for n between r and n, you can now make sure that this formula is also valid if r is equal to zero. So that's what I'm just telling. It's not a very deep thing. I'm saying that by convention, people define this to be one. So you can extend the definition of this from one up to n to zero up to n. That's it. And this remark is also good to re uh, make sure that you understand what's going on. The number of ways that one can choose R objects out of N distinct objects is uh, N choose R. Okay? Now let us start uh, do some, doing some examples together. Okay, the first one is probably very simple. In how many ways can one choose four books from a shelf containing 10 books. So assume that you have, you are in the library, there is a shelf containing 10 books and you want to choose four of the books. So you just put 
take them and keep it in your hands. So apparently the order is not important unless you want to arrange them in another shelf in a different, in a particular order. But if you want to choose four books out of ten books, you are not facing a permutation problem. You are facing a combination problem. Yes. So if hopefully you agree with me that the answer would be here in this case. I, I, I'm just using this symbol but that's up to you which one you want to choose okay so this in this problem n is the total number of objects uh, of course I should be a little bit more careful say that all the books are distinct okay but uh, anyway so 10 and then I will have four of them let me calculate this for the for this time at least most of the time I don't demand you to calculate these numbers and by the way there is a button on your calculator so you should be able to find it that gives this one directly by punching R and N into the calculator. Okay, so here this becomes 10 factorial and then divided by, according to the formula, there is a 4 factorial here and there is a 10 minus 4 factorials here. So let me just do it patiently. So this becomes 10 factorial and then I have 4 factorials, 10 minus 4 is 6, is 6 factorial. So then I have to start splitting 10 factorial up so that I can simplify things more. So I will write 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. This 6, this six factorial in the denominator, I do not open it up because I, I'm going to cancel them out. But 4 factorial I cannot cancel with anything so I can open it up. So 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And then I start simplification. This 6 factorial totally cancels this one. For example, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 will cancel that 8. And then 3 and 9 will be simplified. So that is 3 times, yes? And then how much is left in the denominator? 1 is left, so I don't write it. And then it is 210. So the answer becomes 210. So I have 210 options available if I want to choose four books out of this uh, 10 distinct books uh, okay so I want to pause the video for a moment so that you can solve this problem yourself I think four or five minutes would be enough for this problem so please read the problem here and then try to solve that yourself so I will come back to you in five minutes now just tell me first, do you think this whole problem is a permutation problem or a combination problem and why? It has to be a combination problem because it's a subset and therefore order doesn't matter in a subset. Exactly. So if you remember when we were talking about, uh, when we were discussing set theory, we learned that uh, in a set order of elements doesn't matter. So this is not a permutation problem from our knowledge from set theory we realize that this is a combination problem okay so the first one is actually very simple if you want to calculate so I have a uh, 20 distinct objects elements of my set A I want to choose five of them why this is a choice problem because in a set the order of elements doesn't matter so the combination of these elements matters okay so what I should write I just simply write the answer and let us keep it here because uh, this would be time-consuming I want to go to more interesting problems so how many numbers are there in total 20 I want to choose five item of them so this is the first answer and please if you have questions interrupt me so number two so what is the answer to number two? How many seven element subsets of A do, do contain A one and two? Okay, so, so here I want to have seven element subsets, but I do not have seven uh, degrees of freedom. Two of them has already been chosen. They have to have they have to include both one and two. So how many options are available for me? Five. This is what I want you to ask, okay? So it means that clearly I have to choose five items because two of these items, one and two, have already been uh, determined, okay? So uh, what should be now the answer? So what should I write on top? Can you tell me? AP. 
Yes. So I have seen some students write 20 again. But to, if, you, if you write 20, it means that you are still giving... Because when you write 5, it means that you have already chosen 1 and 2. But if you decide to write 20 on top, it means that you are still giving another chance to 1 and 2 to be chosen again. But this is not what we want, yes? So it means that definitely what you said, 18, is correct. Okay, that's good. And let us go to number 3. So number 3, how many 6 element subsets of A uh, do contain neither 1 nor 2? Okay, so what should I write here? Neither 1 nor 2. And there are 6 element subsets. So let me just write and you tell me. What should I write on top? What should I write uh, at the bottom? Yes, choose six. Yes, eighteen. Choose six. Exactly, because you are uh, saying that one and two shouldn't be chosen. So it and so it means that, and I want to choose six elements. So I have to choose all my six elements from the items that are not one nor two. So this is the answer. And let us go to number four now. How many 8 element subsets of A contain both 1 and 2 but do not contain neither of the numbers 18, 19 and 20? Okay, so what should I write here? So here... Pardon? So let me see, yes, 15 and 6, exactly. I agree with that because you are saying that I am supposed to choose 8 elements but two of them have already been chosen for me, so I have to choose six of them. But uh, I am not allowed to choose these numbers again, so two of these 20 items are gone, and according to the problem, I'm not allowed to choose 18, 19, and 20, so in total, five items from 20 items are gone, so I have to choose six out of 15. So this, these are the things that I expect you to write. So is that understandable for everyone? Okay, now let us go to the next problem. Uh, so there are 10 different physics and 8 different mathematics books. In how many ways can one choose 5 physics and 4 mathematics books and arrange them alternatingly on a bookshelf. Okay, any ideas what to do? You see that I am combining a lot of problems that we had before, so it's still, even though combinatorics, we don't have a very particular way to solve some problems. Problem from, from problem to problem might be the solution is totally different, but you see that there are some things that if you know, you can immediately combine them and solve the new problems, yes? So if you remember when we were talking about arrangement of uh, boys and girls alternatingly, here I'm talking about physics and math books, uh, but here I have 10 different physics books and 8 different mathematics books, but I want to choose. I'm not interested in arranging all the items alternatingly, which of course in this case is not possible because the number of, they differ by 2. So I cannot start uh, arranging all of them alternatingly. But I am asking you, I choose 5 physics books and 4 mathematics books, and then I want to choose them alternatingly. So how can we solve the problem? The first thing is that the first stage of my task would be the choosing five physics books out of ten. So I would say that in these many ways, five out of ten, ten choose five, I can choose five physics books out of ten physics books. Now, the physics books that I am interested in is in my hand, or I have put them aside, okay? After this is done, I go to eight different mathematics books and I choose four of them. In how many ways I can do that, I can choose it, I can write eight, choose four. Now what I have, 
I have a collection of math books of interest for me in one place, the physics books in one place. Now I want to arrange them alternatingly. So how many, op how many positions do I need for these items? Nine op uh, positions, five for physics and four for mathematics. But because the number of physics books is more, I have to start with the physics book. So it, it should be physics, mathematics, physics, mathematics, etc., etc. So the odd positions should be occupied with physics books and the even positions should be occupied with math books, yes? So it means that now I want to arrange physics books in five odd positions. How, can I, how many ways I can do that? Five factorial ways. And after this is settled down, I have to... Uh, arrange the math books in four even positions. How many ways I can do that? In this many ways. Now I want to do all of them one by one, one after the other. So this would be the product rule and that would be your answer. Yeah, is that understandable? Okay, now this one I want to wait a little bit for you. So if you remember, this was one of those problems that I have uh, missed uh, typing, so I deleted. But now you can solve the problem. So I want to wait a little bit for you. Uh, two or three minutes, I think it would be good. Uh, okay, so any any progress? So can you can you give me your strategy because I didn't calculate the final answer but if you remember we talked about a method if I want to arrange something so that uh, I don't know two letters or some letters are not adjacent a number of letters okay but you see this is of course a permutation I am asking about permutations but you will see why in this problem combination also plays a role. Yes, this is what I want you to understand. Still, this is a permutation. I want to see how many permutations of the letters of this word exist so that no two I's are adjacent. So do you remember what was the trick I told you last time? Okay, so what's the first step we do? First, let me write Mississippi in this way. M, I, S, S, then I, S, S, then I, P, P, and I. So this is the situation of this word Mississippi. So I don't know if you remember, we are interested not to put these things next to each other. So for the moment, we ignore this and try to arrange the other objects that we have. So I, in how many ways I can arrange these letters? One, two, three, four, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have, in total, I have seven objects. It is seven factorial. But because some of them are repeated, so what, what should I do? I need to divide by the number of repetitions. M is repeated once, so I just write one factorial and it is not important. But S is repeated four times, so I have to divide by one four factorial here because of that. And then write two factorials because two times, because of two repetitions of P. So, so far what do I have? I have uh, seven positions. So, for example, let us arrange them in one way. I don't know. For example, let me just write P here. This is one of many possibilities, of course. Let me write M here, and then let me write another P here, and then uh, S and S here. Yes, so, yeah, there's nothing left. So how much is left? Uh, I need to, okay, I have four S's, two P's, and one M, so I have to write all four S's here now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the options. But do you remember the trick? What was the trick? The trick was consider these spaces uh, on the left hand side and between these two letters, between any pair of letters here. Yes? And then what should I do here? I need to fill this up. But why this is now 
why we were not able to solve it in the previous but we can solve it right now because here it, I want to put in these empty spaces s four s's of course it doesn't matter you cannot say that okay this situation that I put s here is here I'm oh, sorry I need to put I here I for example here I here and I there okay but arranging these eyes doesn't give me a new uh, a new item yes because all these eyes are the same so it means that I am still interested in four positions out of how many one two three four five six seven eight but is it a P or a C because now I want to arrange all four eyes in these positions so what I need to do I need to choose only choice is important I just want to choose the uh, the positions that I am uh, interested in putting eyes there and you know that if I put eyes in any way between them they will not be adjacent of course okay but I want you to understand that if I want to do the same thing uh, I, if I want to arrange the eyes I need to choose four positions for eyes out of eight so this would be the final answer to this problem if these letters were all different what I have to do I have to uh, permute not only choose these points these positions but also permuting them but for this problem you see again I am interested in permutations but in one part I need to use the idea of combination is the, is the answer clear for everyone? So I would say that, okay, I arrange these letters together with M and then I will get eight empty spaces because all the items are the same. So what I need to do, I need to find four location for these eyes, but eyes are all the same, so I need to choose which empty spaces I am interested in to put these eyes. When I do this choice, I am done. So when I say choice, somehow it means that I have to use this. Is that clear for everyone? Okay, so let me give you uh, two minutes for the next one. A strategy, how to solve the problem? I don't want you to give me the final answer, but how do you see the problem, how we should solve the problem? We assume that uh, the four elements have already been picked from the calculated issue, uh, the problem, and then multiply it by the possible pickings of these letters. Okay, but then what is the, what is the role of the uh, word at least? Okay, but you, in your calculation, what you said, if I understood you correctly, you were able to s calculate it just with one uh, product rule. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. One product. Yeah. But no, you need to consider different scenarios. That is one possibility because let me just write it down. So here, what we have, let me write them with different colors. One, two, three, four, and five, and six. This is in set B, and the set A contains of course the rest of them 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. I want to choose a, an 8 element subset. So it means that I have to choose 8 of these objects and because I am choosing subset this is a combination problem. Order it doesn't matter. But I have to choose at least four elements from these blue ones. It means that either I choose four of them or I choose five of them, or I choose six of them. So you, this is an or. Or and and problem. So that's a combination of product and the sum rule. So I would consider the cases that I just choose four from the blue ones. So what happens? I From the blue ones, six, I choose four of them. But because I want to choose eight elements, I, um, I have to choose four from the red ones. So 
and four from the red ones. The number of red ones is also six. Or, so and means here dot, but then I have or, how many I choose from the blue ones? I have to choose at least four. One possibility is that I want to choose five of them. But if I choose five of them, then there is only three left for me that I have to choose from the red ones. Or, still there is another possibility. I choose all the six one, uh, all the elements from the blue ones, then I choose only two elements from the red ones. Yes? So for, uh, so for example, for the future, so I can write these things like this. Yeah. So you would probably understand what's going on. So here, I choose seven here. Oh, sorry. I choose this six, this six, this six are the blue ones, and this six, and this six, and this six are the red ones. So that would be the answer. Is that understandable now? Because when they say at least four, there is a difference between at least four and exactly four. Okay, so you need to respect about the word at least. When you say at least, it means that that is up to you. If you want, you can choose four of the blue ones only. And then, of course, because you want to choose eight elements, you have to choose four from the red ones. Yes? But there is another possibility. Pardon? <coughs> Yes? Uh, when we take the uh, amount of combinations for the A set, why, yeah. it, why, why are we restricting it to 6? Because A also contains B, right? But A contains uh, B, yes. B, yeah. And uh, if we pick one from B, that doesn't mean we can't get. Like if we pick uh, 4 from B, yes. there's still 2 numbers in. No, no, you are not allowed to do that because if you write four from six and four from oh, yeah. two, eight, then you are then there is a mixture. Then you then then there is something in common between these two parts that you are double counting. So you need to make sure that you are not double counting at all. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, please. When we're choosing from set E. Say we choose uh, three, uh, four, five, and six, and then we go to set A. We can still choose one and two from set A. Y yes, but you can still choose. But if you choose this one, you are also counting that possibility here. Do you understand what I mean? So, so let me just describe it. So when you say that I choose 4 from 6, this means exactly 4 from the blue ones. So what, what is the meaning of... Uh, so let me write it in this way. Uh, what is the meaning of at least 4 elements from this? So let us consider the case that I have the whole items here. If I ask you I want to choose at least 4 elements from the set B, only concentrate on this word. It means that exactly 4 from B or exactly 5 from B or exactly 6 from B. Do you agree with this one? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so I want to... Yes. So here it means that uh, exactly 4 from B. Uh, okay, and then exactly... 5 from B and exactly 6 from B. So that is the meaning of at least uh, 6 from B. And then this one, I am sure that they do not have something in common because the items in which there are exactly 4 elements from B are in this part and the items which have exactly 5 elements from B are in this part. It is clear that there is nothing in common between these two and for the same reason nothing in common between these two and nothing in common between these two. So if I calculate the number of items here and add them, that would be the answer. Yes? Is that understandable? Uh, yes. Okay, now I ask you in how many ways I can choose eight elements from the whole set 
such that exactly four of them exactly now the word exactly four of them is coming from the blue ones so what I do I will go to the blue ones and I choose four of them be and I have to exclude them later because I, if I want to give the opportunity to the left assume that I choose these items for the first one and then if you give these two items the opportunity to be chosen again then you are not counting this part because this part includes exactly four items from the blue ones and you have already chosen your blue items you are not allowed to choose uh, two more item two more blue items here so you shouldn't give the chance to the leftover blue ones to be chosen again otherwise you are ex you are actually uh, <laughs> You are actually in contradiction with yourself because you want to calculate the items which have exactly four elements from B. Is that understandable? Uh, yes, I understand. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, another way to see this, if you say that I choose these four items and then... Uh, so, for example, let me just tell you in this way. I will write here and clean it. For example, assume that you have chosen one, two, and three and four okay and then you want to give the opportunity to these leftovers to be chosen when I want to choose four items and you write four items from eight instead of four items from six yes and then one possibility is to write five six seven eight yes this is one possibility so if you do this you are ca counting this item here but you will also count the same item uh, there yes because what you do here is you choose one two three four and five and then when you want to choose three out of them you will choose six seven and eight but at the end the combination here and the combination here are the same so you are counting these items more than once if you want to count it in that way hopefully this is now uh, understandable okay so let me clean this okay now let us go to the next problem uh, so to do a project we need to have a four member team there are five female candidates and eight male candidates. In how many ways can one set up the team if at most two men can be chosen? Okay, so let me let me make these two problems uh, clear for you. I will pause the video and wait for you to see what would be your solution. Okay, but there is a typo here, so this is comma, not dot. Okay, now... Uh, here you can think about the problem uh, what happens for the first one uh, I think it is clear now the difference in the previous problem I was using the word at least now here I am using the word at most okay so at most two men means zero one or at most two men okay so when you say at most two men, it, it, one possibility is that you don't choose any man at all. Okay, so you need to consider all these things. That's a very simple problem. So if I want to set up a team including four members, five female candidates and eight male candidates, we want to have at most two men. So I would say that I will have zero men. So you don't need to write it, but let me write it. I don't choose men at all. All the uh, all the member of the team, all the members of the team, I will choose from the female ones. So I have five of them. I choose four of them. Or I choose one man, and then I have to choose three women. Women, yes. And then I choose two men, and then I have to choose two women. So that would be the answer. Yes. Uh, so by convention, 
So if you want to calculate this, let me answer this one because I want to make sure that I have done it right. So by convention, the first one is 1. And that is, by the way, it's a very good convention. Now you can feel it. You don't need to write it. If you just write this in the exam, that's okay. Okay? But I just want to keep the pattern the same. Okay, you don't need to write this first one. So the first one, if you calculate, the answer becomes 5. The next one would be... Oh, oh, made me, I'm completely, I was, uh, Alex, I was talking to you about the previous answer, so I don't know, I haven't calculated this at all. And then if you calculate 5 choose 3, it becomes 10, and then the other one is 10 here again, and this is uh, uh, 8 times 7, it's 28. So might be you are right. So this is 5 plus 80 and plus 280 so your answer is correct and then yes 365 as the number of the days in the year yes so that's correct yes thank you sorry for that uh, okay so this is the answer to this problem what about the other one how many seven digit numbers can one write using the numbers one two three four and five so these are the only numbers that, that you can use as digits and so that each of them has exactly five odd digits. So of course, it is clear that a repetition is allowed because you want to write a seven-digit numbers as a seven-digit number using only five numbers: one, two, three, four, and five. Yes. Uh, okay. So what we should do now? Any ideas? So I want to uh, construct a seven digit number. So how many uh, positions I have? I have seven positions to put up my numbers. But these numbers, these digits should be chosen from these five numbers given. I am not allowed, for example, to use nine in my uh, number. Okay, how, what is your strategy to tackle the problem here? Can you tell me what to do? So think about your definitely if I ask you to write a number of this property everyone can write. Yes, I don't believe that there is someone that cannot write one single number with these conditions. Yes. And try to think uh, about the process being done in your brain. If I ask you to do this, what do you do? You want to have exactly 5 odd digits. So one thing that we can do is to say the to put to find to decide about the positions that I want to put in odd, odd digits. What this what is this problem? I have uh, I have seven positions. I want to choose only choice. I want to choose the positions that are supposed to be filled later with odd digits okay so I would say that first what I do I have seven positions I choose five of them okay Ch what does it mean I choose it means that I put it I put a cross on on five of them for example this is the meaning of choice for example this tells me how many ways I can put these crosses on top of them. And then you see that this is a, a choice problem. It's a combination problem. Because another scenario is to, for example, put the cross here, here, and here, and there. Okay? So there is nothing that you have to arrange because all of them are crosses, actually. Yes, you can consider them crosses, and I distribute the crosses on top of these positions. What does it mean? It means that I am uh, selecting the positions for odd digits. In how many ways I can select this many ways? In total, I agree, this problem is a permutation problem. Because interchanging the digits will make a new number for me. 
But this part, I am thinking in this way, this is the strategy that I am tackling the problem. Might be you, this is the case that you have another strategy. I am uh, very pleased to listen to that as well. But this is the way that I was thinking. I choose five of them. It means that I cross on top of five of them. And then, now I want to start my arrangements. On these positions, I am allowed to put only odd numbers. But it is clear from the nature of the problem, definitely repetition is allowed. Okay, now can you tell me in how many ways I can fill up these positions with odd numbers? Can you tell me that? These are my odd numbers. 1, 3, and 5. In how many ways I can put these odd numbers in any number of repetitions, in any order, whatever, in these uh, positions marked by a cross? This is the nature of combinatorics. This is the simplest possible problem ever. I could ask this question from you in the very first session of the teaching combinatorics. Don't let these things uh, distract you. Forget about extra things. Okay? I have five positions to be filled with three elements. One, three, and five. So let us say, in how many ways, in how many ways I can fill up, fill this up? In how many ways? Just tell, yes, three. I can choose whatever, whatever I want. One, three, five. I can choose three. How many ways I can fill up this? Three again, because it's clear the repetition is allowed. How many ways here? Three. How many ways here? Three. How many ways here? Three. I'm allowed to put any number of uh, these elements here. So it becomes 3 to power 5. So it is 3 to power multiplied by 3 to power 5. Now after odd numbers is being settled down here, then I, I'm left with these two positions. Okay? But in how many ways I can do that? Because now listen to the word exactly. So it means that you are not allowed, even though the repetition in general is allowed in this problem, but you are not allowed to re repeat uh, odd digits more than five. You have to have them exactly five, and we have already did it. So there are two more empty spaces. So how many ways I can fill up this one? Two. two. And how many ways here? Again, two. So it means that I have to multiply this by... Uh, this and multiply it by 2 to power 2. So you see this is a very important lesson. Every one of you actually knew about this, but I agree. This is the nature of combinatorics. It sometimes becomes hard because you are distracted. You need to train yourself so that you can immediately understand the core of the problem. But hopefully you see that this is the answer to this problem under these conditions. Agree? Okay, uh, now let us see how you can solve this problem. Oh, the time is finished. Okay, I think this is a good point that if you have a screenshot, I've, of course I will upload everything. Next time I will start with this problem. Combinatorics, so these combination problems are actually more diverse than the previous problems, so I will spend a little bit more sessions on that. And then this, when this is finalized, we go to uh, graph theory, which is the last part of this very long chapter. Okay, so let me stop the video here. Thank you for the lesson. And